Bafo, who is simply known as Miss Fia Brand Coach. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for joining us. <laughs> so much, hello, 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 Miss Fia Brand Coach. How are you doing? <clears throat> I'm doing great yourself. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. It's always a pleasure to have guests on the show. So once I'm having you here, I'm doing great. And ah, I know you're also doing great. <laughs> you're also doing great. Yes, yes. I like the name, Miss Effia Brand Coach. Mm. How did that name come about? <laughs> so if I tell you that that name came about in church, it's okay. quite funny, you know. I was in church, and then I think um, I was actually into branding already, but I hadn't got the name Miss Effia Brand Coach yet. I was right. using the, my name, Ifia. So I right. think I was in church and then um, it was 31st of December. Um, I'm trying to remember the year. Is it 2018 or 2019? One of them. And um, the church was sent. Right. So I think the pastor was preaching and then he said, anything that you do, you need to do it very well. And then um, have a tag that people can find you easily, right? So right. it clicked for me because um, I was into branding already. So then I was like, how can I brand myself that people can easily identify me? And um, there are lots of coaches around. There are lots of strategies. There are lots of um, business coaches and all that. So how can I separate myself from the crowd as usual? So I was like, okay. <laughs> If you are, and a lot of people know that oh, I, I'm into branding. So they usually say, oh, you like branding, you like branding, you like branding. So because, I mean, branding is really everything. When you brand anything well, you can sell just about anything. So I was like, okay. I really don't like it when people address me by my first name, if you are, because one, it's very local. And yeah, I love that I don't have an English name. <laughs> I really didn't understand my dad for doing that, but now I really, really appreciate that. So I was like, okay, since Ifia sounds very um, too normal to mention, and everybody's right about called Ifia, so why don't I add a miss? A miss that everyone can address me, and then I won't feel like they're just calling me. So I added a miss. <laughs> yeah. Then again, I added the brand coach so that I people can easily identify who I am and what I do, especially in Ghana here where coaching is not the norm. Ghanaians don't really know about coaching. They know about consultants. It's quite, we are quite, uh, we are different people all together, but usually people like to call us, use one name for all of us. So I was like, right. okay. So there's a funny story. Recently, a friend visited me and then he was telling me that ah, he was mentioning me to someone and the person wasn't um, getting who I was. And I was like, but I've worked with this person. I've, I've been to this person's program. I've spoken at his programs for a, 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 lot, a lot of times. So I was right. like, wait, but wait, what, what name were you mentioning? And he was like, oh, I've mentioned it. I was like, nah, that wasn't the name you should have mentioned. If you had said brand coach. You would have known straight up. You shouldn't. You wouldn't even have mentioned the Ifia or the Miss Ifia. If you had said Brad Coach, you would have known it's me. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. So immediately he got on the phone with the person and he was like, do you know Brad Coach? I was like, oh, Miss Ifia. And I was like, yeah. Then, then I know I got my branding right. So I was like, okay, yes, my branding is correct. I've got it right. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah she got it right. Yeah, and um, I'm glad. I, I'm hoping. It's a name that sticks in the minds of a lot of people for a very long time because right. um, we, we, in this part of our world, um, <laughs> branding and then this whole coaching thing is new to us as business owners and entrepreneurs. But in the foreign land, oh, it's very common, but over <laughs> here, it's very new to us here. And um, we are trying to put in more efforts into spreading the word because it actually saves you a lot of time, effort, and energy to have a coach. And sometimes mm -hmm. I 
myself before i started this journey i had a coach um, right right he was but even before that my first business i had a mentor and it helped okay. me build my business smoothly. i will always right. mention him everywhere i go peter yobo thank you right. so much he mentored me throughout my business journey and it was it was a very good thing i remember sometimes he wasn't in ghana so but he's a Ghanaian. I would call him right. late night and then you still pick up and speak to me and I'll tell him what the problem is and then we'll try and figure it out. And it helped you because during your entrepreneurship journey, being overwhelmed is a constant thing. And if you don't have someone you're talking to, if you don't have someone you can turn to and be like, oh, right now I'm really stuck. I need help. Right. Then you will feel like giving up. And this is where some people just put their tools down and be like, you know what? Let's just go into the 95 world. I can't do this. So right. yeah, I hope we are able to get the message across that um, entrepreneurs need coaches to help them. And not even just business or brand coaches. There are life coaches as well. Some people like go through life <clears throat> and they can't figure certain things out. If you have a life coach, this life coach can help you go through it. So yeah. Life coach can help you go through it. Um, we will we'll get back to it. We're going to get back because uh, you made mention earlier on of a coach and then a consultant. I mean, we try to interchange this twice, and then uh, we we're going to talk about it. So yeah, right. Thank you so much, those who've joined us online. If you've not yet share the link, just do it so that others will also join because we've actually finished one semester already with an introduction. We've actually done a semester. So <laughs> let the people join us because a whole semester is gone already. She's just taking us through the reason why you need to have a coach, a life coach. So you, <laughs> you just did, you just did, you just did. She just did that one. So yes, we got to, we got to, we got to dive deeper into that aspect as well. But hey, let me just give some shout out to those that have joined us. Yes, I've just mentioned it already. Ama, Beatrice, thank you for joining us from Lome, Togo. Thank you so much. Abiodu Michael, he says, thanks for sharing, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. We hope you're sharing the link so that others will also come and join for this program. Right, so, yeah, I like it. So, uh, your brand is actually standing out, so I don't need to talk much about that one. But then, um, as a brand coach, as a brand coach, so, you are giving a story. So what are some of the things that a brand coach does for the people they're coaching? Because it, for our part of the world or from where I sit or from where people are, some people are watching. When you talk of coach, we are all talking about football. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 that's, what really, that's what really comes to mind. So yeah. how do you True. diffuse that? And then we say, okay, I'm not playing any football match. I'm not having any team. So why do I need a coach? Why should I go for a coach? Or I mean, how, how do you advise someone who is starting a business or who is into business to get a coach? Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, before I started any of my journeys, I went in to get a coach and um, I already established the fact that it makes life very simple and easy for you because these people have gone through what you are about to go through. They have taken it upon themselves to learn the ins and outs of what you are about to go through. So they're able to help you go through it without you feeling stuck, without you feeling overwhelmed, without you not having anyone to talk to. So right. first, the importance of having a coach is to help you, to guide you on your journey. Right. So um, I'm gonna, um, so there's a difference between a personal brand coach a business coach that's that like different coaches as i explained earlier and um i am a business growth coach and then a personal brand coach so i'm going to talk from my perspective so basically when i'm working with you what i'm going to help you do is identify the problems in your business know where you're falling short find solutions come up with strategies that are going to help you grow your business because it's one thing to have a business and it's another thing to grow your business and let's not even get to the sustainability aspect of it so as a coach i am guiding you through the processes so um 
typically an example is let's say you are you're starting your business as an entrepreneur <clears throat> i am going to guide you <clears throat> to draw your business plan so after you draw your business plan i'd like to guide you mind you i'm saying guiding you i'm not saying i'm going to do it for you guiding right. you is telling you that okay once you've done this and we review it and see okay is this okay or not no this is not okay let's change this let's change that and then we move forward right but so um as i mentioned i'm going to guide you build your business plan then we move from business plan we, we move to your strategies your business strategy so yeah i'm, I'm just guiding you throughout the process and then right. also your entrepreneurship journey. So there are, there's a point where I'll tell you, listen, you need to take a break. Or there's a point right. where I'll tell you, you need to employ someone on your team. So basically, okay. I'm guiding you in the steps to take to grow right. your business and then yourself as a whole. Right. So that is what coaches do. On the other hand, consultants will come up with whatever they know you tell them your problem they come up with a solution for you hand the solution to you and then you will go and execute it but a coach right. is coming up with the solution for you and then walking you through the process right, right. most smes going for consultants because of course that is what we are used to in this part of the world i come in i tell you okay your business is here this is the reason why you're falling short. Um, you do A, B, C, D, and then you move forward. And then I'm done. Right. But once I walk out of the door, whether the strategy works or not, that's on you. But with a coach, <laughs> yeah, but with a coach, once we are walking through the strategy and we realize that, okay, this is what we said the strategy is going to be, but let's tweak this a little bit. Let's do it this right. way. Let's do it that way. And then we move forward. So I always say that think of me as your business partner who has no shares in your business at all. <laughs> right, but wants the good of the business. Okay, 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 right, right. Thank you for joining us here on the Power Impact Series Show, where today we have here with us Miss Fia Brand Coach. And then uh, we're discussing um, the very important topic. But yeah, she's actually clearly defined. The difference between a coach and then the consultant. Yes, that is what she just finished doing. So if you're joining us, don't worry. Uh, we're going to have a lot of things to talk about. Right. So straight into our topic for today. Business growth. Mm. Business growth. Um, some, some people that we know that are in business, we saw them five years ago, the way the business was. Mm -hmm. You saw them three years ago same way the business was we've seen them now same way we saw them five years ago and uh, when you speak with them they tell you that they are making they are making money so they don't see why they have to think of tweaking or doing anything to the business it's the same thing that they are just using to sort their livelihood and other things up so why do you think uh, businesses should grow <laughs> why the topic today business growth why 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 business yeah. growth? <laughs> so um first off i would want to say this it will take a very long time for your business to grow hmm. now in our society we see businesses grow in less than three months in less than two months and it's allowing it's giving a lot of pressure to the youth of today when they come into the space and then they realize that this person started this business two months ago and it's grown. I have started uh -huh. two months ago and it's not growing. Uh -huh. They just give up because they think my business needs to grow once I start it. It's a whole process. Mm -hmm. Business growth is not overnight. People right. you see making their first uh, million dollars and all that, they didn't do it overnight. They didn't wake up and say, I made my first million overnight. It doesn't happen. They've gone through a whole series of growth where they had their down moments, their up moments and all that before 
they they got to where they are so let's get this straight businesses don't grow overnight mm -hmm. you see a lot of businesses and then a business will come and then they have like so many branches all over the place they're like ah, this business is really growing <laughs> they may have branches around they may be very popular but maybe they are not growing for you okay. know they are not even making profits they are breaking even which okay. is a whole topic on its own because making profits is one thing and then breaking even in business is another thing right. for you know they are not making profit they are breaking even that's how come they are able to do what they are doing or they have an investor who is investing in them but when it comes to the actual business growth, that is organic business growth, it takes time. It's a whole procedure. It's a whole procedure of strategies, marketing, a lot of things go into business growth. So I want us, the youth, to come to an understanding that business growth takes time. Because I see a lot of people, I, I speak to um, entrepreneurs day in, day out, and they're like, Oh, I started my business two months ago and then I'm not seeing any growth yet. <laughs> for a business, sometimes for a business to even realize profit, it takes up to a year. I mean, in the olden days, it used to take up to a year, but now social media, thanks to social media, it picks up faster. So when we say um, business growth, basically we are talking about the business moving from A to B. Right. And as you right. mentioned, you see a business, it's at A, maybe in 2020, 2023, it's still at A. And they say, oh, they don't see the need to grow or they don't see the need to change anything about their business. I think um, recently I saw something online. Um, one, of, uh, one of a popular speaker was saying that um, one of these brands, I've forgotten the brand, had now had... I think as Nike changes their strategy every three months. They no more do the whole year strategy, but they change their strategy every three months because they want to realize growth and know how their business is doing. But for all you know, some of us will start and we'll build a business plan, have a business strategy. That's if we even do have a business strategy. And that business strategy, yeah, that business strategy is what we are holding on to. For the next five years for the next 10 years that is our strategy and when the market's dynamics change we don't do anything about it we are still in that so if their strategy is to send customers a message every month to remind them that they are there every month they will send that message for like maybe right about five years straight and they don't even realize that they are not making anything up, up from it, but rather losing. And when other people are, have devised a, a new way of sending emails and reaching out to clients through emails, they are still reaching out to clients through maybe WhatsApp or text. Meanwhile, they could, if they switched their strategy, they could have embedded the two and have both ways going, which would bring about growth for them. So growing your business has different ways. And I would say this again, it is not overnight. Yeah. Growing your business is not something that you can achieve overnight. So it means you need to work on it. You need to, work. You need to change your strategies almost every time. Nike is doing it every three months. I'm asking you, how, how are you doing yours? Are you doing it on a on a yearly basis or you are doing it three four five years based to change your strategy is it working for you is a strategy you're using working for you yes you need to change the way you're doing your business right so a quick one there how, how do you start growing the business then because um i mean if if you are doing it the same way and you are not actually um abreast with things that are happening just as you said people might just be doing um WhatsApp, test messages, what are other ways through which people can get into to, um, uh, do I say accelerate the growth of their business or it's a natural cause, it will grow by itself. So how should one do it? How should you 
um, start growing the business? How should you do it? How, what are some of the techniques that you use to grow the business? Well, first off, I would say that, um, so there are, there's two types of growth. There's the fast right. growth and then there's the careful mm -hmm. growth. Wow. Fast now what careful. we see is the fast growth. Yeah. What we see is the fast growth. Um, okay. Someone opened a business, start running ads, starts doing influencer marketing, billboards all over the place, and then they begin to grow. Right. But you see, what happens is in a span of maybe six months, they grow very fast. Right. If they don't go according to how they started, they becomes mm -hmm. they get stuck. Okay. And then I think we've seen this with a lot of popular brands, actually. <laughs> so you see that a brand will come, it's all over the place, and then it goes off. They're like, ah, where is this people? I'm trying to remember a brand that I can't see on the market. <laughs> <laughs> that actually starts some fights, but yeah, I'm trying to remember a brand that I can't see on the market anymore, but actually came in very fast. Right. Um, I know. Let's let's use this. I know Better Malt is still right. on the market, right? But Better Malt came to take over the malt market, right? Within a short time frame, Better Malt was everywhere. People stopped drinking more tagimis. Mm -hmm. And they came in with a different market um, product, a competitive product. Their malt tasted close to like malt and milk when you mix malt with milk. It had okay. that taste. But malt tagimis has the bitter end taste, right? Sorry. So, Mortar Guinness being the Mortar Guinness they are and being the brand that has been for over the years, they had to step back, do some analysis and everything. And then they came back into the market. Even though better malt is still there, when you look at the malt now, you will still go in for Guinness malt, the Mortar Guinness. But mm -hmm. at some time, at a point in time, better malt was the order of the day. Sometimes you go into the market and it's on shortage. I know this because I, by, at that time, I was um, a field officer. So I used to work with market women and I knew the products that were moving at the time. So right. you, you would talk right. to them and then because they need a loan, you need to know what products is moving for them. And you're like, okay. oh, better mods, better mods, a call, a motor. And it was, it was, it was quite popular on the market. Right. Now, right. I don't think it's really popular on the market like it used to be. Okay. So that is fast growth. But the thing is, the thing with fast growth is when you don't move at that same pace, you get stuck. And then you get missing. But with powerful growth, that is where you are using your strategies, you are using your analysis, you are you are looking at the market condition and all that, and you are strategically positioning yourself in the market. So that way you know where at what time you are pushing and where you are going, at what point you're going to. So before you even think of growing, you need to know which type of growth you want to. Okay. Okay. And then also, another thing I would say if you want to grow is to keep, a, keep your eye on the market. Right. That's, that's interesting. Now, <laughs> due to social media, the market changes every now and then. There's something new every day. Sorry? No, no, go on, go on. No, you go on. All right. There's something new every day. There's always a new market strategy or a content strategy that is coming up. So you keeping your eye on the market, you are making sure that, okay, if 
this is in trend. How can I position my business for my business to align with that trend? And then also that way I can attract my target audience. Wow. Wow. So keeping your eye on the market is very, very mm. important when it comes to business growth. So kind of being abreast with what is happening, is it is it the same way as keeping your eye on the market, yeah. like knowing yeah. what's happening? Being abreast with what's happening because a lot of businesses, um, so this is what happens. They open a business, they choose the platforms they want to market on. They come up with their marketing strategy and that's it. They don't, they don't know what's going on. When there's a new dance, there's a new way of introducing a product. There's a new way of taking product pictures. That's it. Whatever they started with is what they are going with. And that is where people don't realize growth because you're not changing anything about your business. So if coffee bought from you today and there's a new competitor, so let's say you are selling um, a pen, Right. And if you bought the spend from you, let's say, three months ago, and there's a new competitor who is selling a pen, but the pen is in a pack, is in a nice package, a nice right. box. Who do you think Kofi, if Kofi's pen gets finished, who do you think Kofi's going to? <laughs> that is a nice package. <laughs> yeah. So basically, because you failed to see that, now pens are being packaged in a box because you, you fail to to keep an eye on the market coffee is going to someone else and that's how businesses are losing clients every day okay okay wow wow that's how people are losing clients every day when they keep their eyes off the market so we just love to say that song that's it keep your eyes on the road in the field of business keep your eyes on the market that means you need to be constant with what is happening on the market you may mention of um platforms so as a business do you need to do you need to market or advertise or promote your product on all the platforms or i mean do you have to be on every platform just to push your product there or your service there how do you do it yeah so i always say that it doesn't hurt to have more okay every platform has a different customer base okay. and every platform has a different strategy what we okay. do today is to use one strategy for all platforms so you see that someone is on tiktok shouting come and buy this phone this phone is very good da, 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 da. and we'll go to instagram and go and do the same shouting meanwhile instagram clients don't even want shouting right instagram clients want to hear something else so there are different, it doesn't hurt to be on different platforms, but I always say that have at least two or three platforms you must touch that okay. you are on there actively. My businesses are on every platform, but I only do Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. These are our major platforms, but we are on every platform. If you search us, if you type our business name, you'll find it on every platform. But we monetize and strategize based on these three platforms. Okay. Okay. Well, I always say that as a business owner, just have like three platforms that you master very well, that you can sell yourself on there and know that these platforms do not have the same customer base. So if on Instagram, you're speaking English and they understand English, that doesn't mean that TikTok, you go and speak English and they understand English. Okay. Okay. So based on your target audience. And then I realized one thing, um, when it comes to businesses selling, actually, we sell to the average people and then we are crying that we are not growing. <laughs> we don't sell to people who need our products. So you ask someone who is your target audience? Oh, my target audience is a, a university student who is earning maybe 20 CDs, da, 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 da. That is okay. That is 
that defines your demographics and everything. That is fine. But then the university students, out of 10 university students, how many of them really need your products? So you are looking at, as a business, you should be looking for people who need solution that your product offers. Not people who just fall within your target audience range. You can have a target audience, but then within that target audience, there are people who know that, oh, I need this product, but I'll buy it later. You are you, you were you were leaving the house in the morning, you saw that, oh, your Milo is finished. You know that, oh, my Milo is finished, but no, not now, because Milo is not your priority. But then a mother who knows that her kids can't go to school without drinking Milo needs Milo <laughs> ASAP. Yeah, needs Milo ASAP when the, the Milo is finished. She needs to get the Milo. So there you are there standing there with your product and be like, oh, Milo at your doorstep. So there are keywords you are using, and then the, the woman knows that, ah, yeah, I need to order Milo. Right. She's not walking out of her house to go and buy it from the shop opposite her. There's something that you said that will track her to just text you and be like, please, how much is your Milo? Okay, can you deliver it to this, this, that? How long will it take to deliver? And then you tell her, oh, right away. Perfect. She pays you. You make your money. That way your business is growing. But then, if you are looking at the average person who wants your product, but doesn't even, is not ready to get it, then you are selling, it's like you are selling to someone, you are preaching, it's like basically like a pastor preaching. The pastor doesn't know when who is ready to give their life to Christ. I mean, they will eventually, but they don't know when. Right. So they keep preaching until they are ready. And that's how we treat our businesses. We treat our businesses as though our target audience or our customers that we need don't know when they need their product, but we keep telling them that, oh, you need the Milo, you need the Milo, you need the Milo. <laughs> so they are ready. But even those clients, those people that are trigger words that you use, that will like let them know that, oh, I need to get an ASAP. Right. So before you even convert those clients to those people into clients, you first have to look at those who want that solution immediately. So I always say that as business owners, as entrepreneurs, we should focus on those who need our products ASAP rather than focusing on those who know that they need our products but are not ready to get it. Not ready to get it. So do you have what, what what are some of the things you need to do or you used to measure like this mom who needs this uh, product for their children on a daily basis? What are some of the things or metrics you put in place to get this kind of customers so it helps your business to grow? Because, uh, for instance, if I'm dealing with um, skin products, how do I do that metrics? And I know that Miss Fia would definitely need ah. Uh, my product is it a random thing i do or i have some approach with which i go straight to the clients that i know will need this kind of thing i just wanted to just uh, elaborate a bit on it for a business that is growing now um, someone who just started a business and knows that well this is my target clients but how do i identify those that really need it that i can now um channel my 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 kind of promotion advert and all those things to this target group so it helps my business to grow is it the change in my strategy changing my advert approach how do we do it how do we do it for a business that is growing okay so before you even um know who your customers are there's something called target audience definition you need to define your target audience so that's what I mentioned. You 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 say, oh, they are in Legon, they 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 earn this amount of money, they make this, they, you can find them on maybe Instagram, TikTok. That is like the general thing. But to know who you are really speaking to, you need to define their problems. You need to come up with the problems that make them stay up at night. Okay. So let's say I have I have acne on my face. Right. And then you are into skincare. 
someone who has acne definitely has a confidence problem because when they go into the midst of people people will be looking at them like what's that on their face ah their confidence is very low right so with that you are telling me that if i come online and then i have a confidence problem because of my acne you're telling me that your soap is going to clear my acne and then restore back my confidence versus telling me that oh you're so clear acne which one will i go for <laughs> yeah, because i'm not really looking for my acne to clear but i'm looking sure. for my confidence back which i myself i don't know that when my acne clears i'll get my confidence back okay okay so in order for me to get my confidence back because automatically once my face is clear and i know that i'm looking beautiful like now nah, there's nothing you can tell me i always say that there's nothing you can tell a beautiful woman like she knows she is pretty right so once i know that oh my face is glowing and you're talking to me i'm looking right into your face because i know that ah the girl is looking fine but then if i feel like because of my acne you're talking to me and then my head is down which can be a selling point you can actually tell this this person that your confidence is gone to the extent that when you're talking to people you can't even look at them in their face that way the person will be like yes you are talking to me please your products i need it meanwhile maybe the product even is not doing what you are saying that it will do <laughs> yeah and that's how come people are growing their businesses it is the okay. sugar words you are using for these customers the problems that keep them awake at night the things that the, the, their desires their deepest desires things that they wish they had but they can't get wow. an entrepreneur wow. wants to be very rich that's when they lay down in bed they just see that their phone keeps beeping and you sell a service that helps right. entrepreneurs get that money or gives them that opportunity instead of telling that entrepreneur that oh my service will help you get that opportunity or help you get become rich sell the dream of the entrepreneur to the entrepreneur themselves so imagine you are sitting in your lamborghini you just bought you are triggering something in that person that the person is thinking of where to get the money to come and buy whatever you are selling these right. people don't even have the money down some of them don't have the money down. <laughs> They think of where to get the money to come and buy. And that's how you hear someone saying that, oh, I'm saving to go to Dubai. Dubai is selling themselves in a way that, Charlie, when you come to Dubai, you are in heaven. Like you are somewhere else. Right. So now people save towards it because even though they can't they afford it, currently, they want to go. They want to belong. Right. Right. And that is the society we live in now. People want to belong so bad. So sell their dreams back to them. Whatever product you have, that product is fulfilling someone's dream. So sell that dream back to them. Sell their problem to them. Let them know that, ah, this is your problem, auntie. This is your problem. I have the solution to your problem. Don't worry anymore. Come for the solution. People wow. will write you with their money. They'll be like, take, 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 take my money because <laughs> you have said something that, of course, I am looking for. But mm -hmm. what we see on a daily basis, oh, this phone is 5,000 Ghana CDs. The phone has um, a wallpaper. You're able to make do FaceTime calls and all that. These are things that we know about this phone. It's obvious. The same thing that iPhone is saying, the same thing that iPhone is doing, Samsung can do. But iPhone, why do people still buy iPhone? Because they want to belong. People always upgrade their iPhones because 
they have to know they want people to know that ah they to be are they are there not because some some people who have iphones can't even afford a three square meal but there's some um what's the word there's some dignity attached to someone who is holding an iphone as compared to someone holding an android no disrespect to android users <laughs> <laughs> but we find it in our society and we are like right. why is it happening and that is it iphone has sold the whole brand as if you use an iphone you are a real g you are rich right. iphone is very rich so you, right. you you see that someone you meet someone and the person is like hey who is cow look at the iphone so you are right. selling their dreams to them, you are selling their problems to them, and then telling them that your product is their solution. Sell your problems to them, sell your dreams to them, tell them your problem is your solution, you have the solution. So that means you're not really selling just the product or service, but you're going beyond that to get to them with a perfect example you gave about this um, confidence one. That means a person needs that confidence to stand out in public but because of what they are experiencing they are not being able to do that so you as the business owner or the product owner you are going beyond that service and that product to give something else to the person and that something else is what is actually to like your product right thank you so much Eunice Akosuya Baini Tedeku says I'm feeling it. Yeah, we are feeling it here. I'm telling you. <laughs> we are feeling it here. It's 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 wonderful here. Yeah, thank you so much for those that are joining us. Yes, we'll be wrapping up shortly. But before that, if you have any questions, please get to the chat here. We are bringing your questions. Let's also have the conversation rolling now with uh Miss Effia Brands Coach. Right, 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 right about now. I mean, I'm sure you are getting your hashtags for the day. Make sure you gain more for the hashtag for the day. You know, as we do it, we have hashtags for each episode so if you are just make sure you got us some hashtags that we use for the day yet so i mean a lot of me said we are going beyond we are going beyond just the product or the service we we get into them we hitting that point that resonates with you so much fall in love with your service or your product he said sometimes they might not even need a product but because you've been able to explore or expose them to certain things they are not even a king of you to sell your products all right so before we do some wrapping up we want to situate this whole situation in our current dispensation with the the coming of social media now we don't do what we used to do some years back but with the, the arrival of social media and certain pages and certain applications as a coach as a coach, what are some of the advices you want to give to someone who is one starting the business? What are some of the advantages they can take of our current dispensation? And then two, someone who's actually in the business is actually in the business. Uh, and then those that are high, high. So we normally do this, um, we normally say or uh, make this joke that some huge brands are actually advertising on some smaller brand spaces. Why? Why do they? We want you to let, let, let us know what are some of the things that a startup business in this dispensation needs to do. And already a business that is moving, what are some of the advantages they need to take from what is happening here? Your catch on that so that we can move into wrapping up today's episode but you just want us to know i mean what are some of the advantages that people need to take from this dispensation of social media hype and stuff yeah. okay so first off i would say that um if you are looking to start a business um you're looking to enter the entrepreneurship environment you should be ready to face any kind of problems. You should be ready to 
face any kind of challenges because I realized that these days we paint entrepreneurship to be so rosy. It's, it's so <laughs> nice. Yeah, like if you're an entrepreneur, it's very beautiful. The only beauty about entrepreneurship is that you, you choose your own times. But then there's more work to be done. You work more than your nine to five job. So if you are bringing the same nine to five energy into your entrepreneurship space, you would you would you would go out real quick because maybe you're nine to five, you have someone doing all other things for you, and then you're doing just one aspect of the job. But when you start your journey, you have you're going to do everything yourself so you are able to build a team. Some people are fortunate to come in with their whole investment, having huge money to have a team and all that. But even that, choosing the wrong team can hurt the growth of your business. But let's not go into that. Okay. <laughs> let's not go into that. <laughs> so um, starting a business, you should first analyze the markets you want to enter into. Know your competitors by heart. Know your competitors by heart. By heart. Is it that you're stocking up? You are going to stock on your competitors. Are you going to do? If you have to <laughs> stock on them, stock on them because you need to know them. Know them and know their language they are speaking to their customers. So once you do okay. that, you know where which angle you are coming from because sometimes your competitors your competitors are not exploring certain markets. So let's take Acne, um, the skincare brand, for example, again. Right. A skincare brand has come and then they are selling just skincare. They don't offer any um, advice or whatsoever. Some people buy products <clears throat> and then they don't even know that, oh, this product is not good for my skin or maybe I have a tough skin, so this product is not going to work for me. Or I have a very soft skin, so this product is going to damage my skin so there's the your competitor doesn't offer consultation service that is a whole market you can explore and use to sell to your audience and trust you me okay. people will come to you just because of that tiny um, advice you give them over the person who is just selling the product and that's how come now People like to buy online than to go to a store to go and buy. But when you go to a store, it's a sales girl that is there for you know the sales girl doesn't even know what product is which. But maybe online you're able to chat to the person and the person knows that okay, oh, you have rash on your skin. Okay, let me give you this and that. It will clear the rash, trust me. Right. And then you buy it and then it clears the rash. You are stuck with that person, you're not going anywhere again. And that's how you get loyal customers to stay with you. So your competitor might not be offering consultation services. You can, on the other hand, offer consultation services. So when I say know your your competitors by heart, you should know them by heart. Also, know your customers by heart. Some people, <laughs> some people start businesses and then they are six months into the business the business is doing well then they leave it for their team they are no more involved in the business forgetting that they were the first point of contact of the business mm. it's okay to sit back and relax as a CEO. it's okay a business owner it's okay to i always say that when you build a business you can't you have no idea about and you can hire professionals who can do the job to do the job for you in order for your business to grow. So once you're starting that journey and you, you are the first point of contact of the business and you know the ins and outs of the business, you need to know your customer by heart. Sometimes it is very nice when you go back to a business after many so many years and then you text them and they're like oh hi if you are there's some excitement that 
drops into your heart. You're like, oh, they remember me. <laughs> but then if you come and then I'm like, oh, hi, I treat you as a new customer all over again. I don't think you keep coming back. But once you have it in mind that I remember you, of course, you're always coming back. So know your customers by heart. Right. It's very important as a business, a new business owner, even as an existing business owner. For the existing business owners, please and please work on your strategies. Don't use one strategy for your whole business. The fact that strategy A is working for product A doesn't mean strategy A will work for products B. Okay. Some people use the same strategy too for the new products they introduce. It wouldn't work. Every product has different dynamics to it. And your strategy shouldn't, the fact that it's a strategy doesn't mean it should be one way. Right. And this is something right. I do with my team. We come up with a monthly strategy for the business. We come up with, there's, there's a business strategy, there's a marketing strategy, there's a product strategy. Wow. There are all different so strategies that you use in running your business for it to grow. But someone wow. is using business strategy for marketing strategy for product strategy. Right. And then, and then in this era of social media, what you say on there really matters. Okay. Some of us go there, we post a picture, right price, and that's it. Okay. I'll see it. <laughs> And then I'll, I'll recognize you all right, but I'll go and look for another option. Okay. When I go and I find someone who has explained the product very well to me, trust me, I'm not coming back to you. I'll forget about you instantly. I only remember okay. that I checked you out. Right. And that's what is hurting our businesses. Because it's social media, we go, we post, and that's it. no content strategy nothing sometimes social media every platform comes up with different ways of running the platform i think some months back instagram was saying that they have become a video platform so reels were moving faster so imagine that someone who wasn't abreast with the social media trends and all that keeps posting pictures instead of yeah. Yeah. yeah nobody's going to find your business because even instagram is running ads people you open a business and you're not running ads you you don't market no in fact you don't have a marketing strategy the business strategy is what you are using too if you wake up and you say that okay i am selling this to this person these, these people if that's what you started with in the business you are still with that till now you won't realize any growth growth is dynamic changes come day in day out change is difficult but you need to abrace yourself for it if something comes in and you can't do it, outsource it. We as business owners think we can do everything ourselves. And we think about the money we are going to pay someone to do it for us. Save yourself time and energy and let someone do it for you. Pay the person and get the best results you can. Because right now, people are doing so much. You, you realize that in your space, there's a way people edit videos. You can't edit that way. Find an editor. Outsource that service to them. Get them to do it for you and pay them what they are worth. That's right. That way, get quality for whatever you're doing. I always say that as a business owner, quality should be your hallmark. If you That's want right. to do it. Quality should be your hallmark if you want to grow. Because in this space of people wanting a lot of things, in as much as they want a lot of things, they look for quality. And that's where branding right. comes. 
that's a, a discussion for another day <laughs> yeah because if you are able to work on your brand as well it also comes with a, a lot of advantages sure. and um, sure. who as a, a person and the business owner also needs to work on your personal brand personal branding is not for celebrities or influencers only and then okay. public it's not for them only it's for everyone and every anyone who wants to grow as a person and then their business as well personal branding is for everyone who wants to grow and for their business as well so yes 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 thank you so much for joining us yes you're on the power in past three show where today we hosted or we are hosting miss Effia brand coach and it has been a wonderful journey from first minute to this minute it has been a back to back a back to back releasing and unleashing alpha wisdom nuggets it's been a wonderful time so if you're just joining us thank you for joining us but don't worry just make sure after the show, you go back to the start of the show and then make sure you gather all that has been shared because a lot has been shared with us by Ms. Evia, brand coach. It's been a wonderful time yet. So let me just say some messages here. So Eunice Akosia Baini says, what? I'm feeling it. Thank you so much, Eunice. And she says, uh, I like the way she smiled after she mentioned entrepreneurship space <laughs> yes we love that one too and then uh uh, uh, uh unis comes back to getting says uh it's a kind of stuck in them i mean when you talked about uh knowing your competitor um and then i uh, thank you so much uh estelino saibonsu she says enjoying the topic and the learning i mean and learning the processes as well thank you so much um so um, before you go, if anyone wants to contact you, if anyone wants to get to uh, Ms. Fia, the brand coach, to know about um, the coaching charges, to know more about, I mean, building their business and then growing their business, where can they get to you? What are some of the um, the links you want to share, the pages you are on, and then how they can get to you? Right. So um, you can find me on Instagram. TikTok and LinkedIn. Miss Epia Brand Coach. Once you type that, you should find me. And then you can also check our website, Miss Epia Brand Coach You, um, if you want to work with me, you can book a free discovery call where we talk about your problems. I get to know if we are a good fit to work together because, of course, I need to know if we can work together. Because I will push you to do the best. So if you are not ready for that, please do not contact me. Because if you are not hungry for success, I'm not your person. So once you go to missafiabrandcoach.com, you should be able to book a call, um, a clarity call, and then um, we take it from there. We have other packages as there that um, and free resources as well you can explore. So just visit our website, www.missafiabrandcoach.com, and you will get all the information. But then for socials, you will find me on LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, and then Instagram. But where I am active most, LinkedIn and, and Instagram. So find me on there. <laughs> find me on the LinkedIn and Instagram, where she is mostly or always active yeah thank you so much for joining us and hey people you know how we do it already at the end of every section or at the end of every episode we come up with a hashtag and you know it you know it you know it. i don't know what what you were able to pick as a hashtag for today but to get some hashtag just drop it just drop it let's 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 compare and let me stock on you because you are my competitor let me keep stocking on what you're able to gather and let's let me compare and see how i can i can i can come and dazzle you with what i also got so if you're able to get some hashtag let me know oh uh, better still we're going to drop the hashtag for today's episode with Miss sophia brand coach ladies and gentlemen here we go with today's today's hashtag for the day mm, 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 mm. and that's the hashtag we have for today today's hashtag is that 
sell their problems to them. A hashtag for today. Sell their problems to them. Because some don't even know they have a problem. But you are able to identify that problem and sell it back to them. So thank you so much for joining us. We want to say a very big thank you to Mr. Fiat Brand Coach for gracing this opportunity to be on the Power Import Series show for the very first time. And you know what? This is not the first time she's coming. She's going to come again and again and again and again because <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting the buzz. Yeah, I'm getting the buzz. Yeah, people are asking where when is she coming back again to dive deeper. So she's going to come back again for another one, another section, definitely to do that. We want to say thank you from the team, from the African Season Speakers Network. We are so privileged and honored having you here to share this wisdom nuggets with us and to you. My lovely audience, ah, you always keep the chat room bustling with a lot of questions and a lot of encouragement. We want to say thank you all for this episode. You know what we do? We meet same time next week. Mm. Same time, same platform. We want to say thank you and bye-bye. And remember, dreams are in levels. Make sure you get to the top level of your dream. And never forget that hashtag for today sell their problem to them have a wonderful week to meet my name is ambassador benjamin also answer see you next